Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lah wa nasyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Amma ba'du fa'udzu billahi as-samil alim minasy syaithanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My dear viewers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon you all. Welcome back to our program that is MT Kids Time, which is being brought to you by MT International Gambia Studio. And in this I am here with some of the children. We are discussing a very vital topics regarding the universal religion of Islam. In our last episode, we have discussed another important topic, and I hope we have get a lot from that topic. That is, who is the founder of Islam? Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa wa Mujtaba Khatamun Nabiin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have learned a lot from him. This time we are going to talk another very important pillar that is the worship of Allah. Of course, we have said it, you cannot be a true believer or less or an until you follow all the five pillars of Islam with their due respect. So without wasting much time here, I have against once again my children who will be helping us to make this program interactive and lively. So stay with us, please, to get more once again. So before we spend more time, we start our program with the recitation from the Holy Quran by Sister Khadija. Please, can you give us the recitation? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Kul huwa allahu ahad. Allah is the same. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufu wa ahad. Chapter 112, verse 1 to 4. Jazakallah, thank you very much for that wonderful recitation. That is Surah Al-Ikhlas. Let us hear the translation from our brother Hassan Tabo. Please, Hassan, can you give us the translation? Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the most merciful. Say he is Allah the one, Allah the independent and besought of all. He beggars not nor was he begotten, and there is no like unto him. Thank you very much. We heard it. This is the perfect unity of Allah. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sassam is being told here by the Almighty Allah to tell the people to whom he is sent to, that is of course to the entire mankind, that tell them he is Allah, the one, meaning he is one and is unique, the independent. When you say independent, you don't need to depend on another being. So Allah don't need our support, he is independent. And he has no beginning and he has no ending. He has no child. He was not born, and he has never born. And there is not a single thing that is on earth and heaven and anywhere that look like unto Allah the Almighty. This is the perfect unity of Allah. So let us hear a hadith from Brother Masrul Hydra, which will be telling us about the importance of worship, most especially the formal prayer. Yes, Brother Masrur. Can you give us the hadith, please? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uzu billahi minas shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa an ibn Masawud radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam afdalul a'mal as-salad fi awwali waktiha. Jazakallah. Thank you very much. We all heard the hadith from the warden of our beloved Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we had something like a salat. So can we hear the translation by Sister Tahira Fofana? Please give us the translation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Narrated by Anas radiallahu an, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one of the best deeds is to offer salad in its early time. We all are that this is what the Holy Prophet Muhammad defined as the best deed. 
you can say going to Hajj to me is the best thing. Or you can say by giving me money is the best action I can have. What do the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallam, did not say that? He said, Afdalul Amali as Salatu fi awali waktiya. This is the best deed that one can achieve in the sight of Allah the Almighty. Not in the sight of any human being, but in the sight of Allah the Almighty. It is offering your prayers at their right time. You don't wait around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock to offer your Fajr prayer. Or you wait around 3 to 4 you offer your Zuhr prayer. Not at all. Not only offering prayer, you see, he said offering prayer at the beginning of the time. That is at its appointed time. So that is the best deed what can ever attain. So first and foremost, it will be very vital for us to explore and know as Muslim. And we all know that all religions, they worship their Lord in one way or another. Though we have different way of worshiping. Of course, we see the Christian when they are worshiping their Lord, they have some drums. They have some musics that they play. For them, that is their way of worship. And other people also have their way of worship. But as Muslims, we also have our own way of worship. And this is we offer our prayer on an appointed time. And it's daily. Not from today I can pray, tomorrow I can pray. There is not a single day that Muslims are excused, unlike other religions. Some religions they offer once in a week their prayer. But for Muslims, it's every day. This is so strong to the extent that the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, if somebody cannot offer his prayer while standing, you know, we all know, as Muslims we stand when we are praying. If you cannot offer your prayer when you are standing, you should sit down. And some people, maybe their condition cannot even allow them to sit down. They can only lie down. Then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you can offer your prayer while lying down. Some people, their condition is so worst to the extent they cannot even offer their prayer while they are lying down. They cannot move their hands in hands to do the action. He said, then you have the intention in your heart that you are offering prayer. You see how important prayer is. There's not a single situation that the Holy Prophet says, yeah, yes, when you have this situation, don't pray. For example, he, he did not say it. When you are sick, don't offer your prayer until when you are okay. But he said, you offer your prayer when you, you sit down. If you're going to sit down, lie down. If you're going to lie down, do action. If you're going to have action, do intention. So you see? And the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, the first thing, the first thing in the day of judgment, the servants of Allah are going to be questioned, is going to be prayer. If your prayer is okay and it is enough, then you are safe. All other things will be fine. Because this is what Allah the Almighty told us. He said, He said, prayer prevents the person from indulging in evil action or doing things that Allah don't like. So of course, if your prayer is okay, then obviously all the other actions will be okay because that is the time you achieve the purpose of your prayer. But Holy Prophet said, if your prayer is not okay, then all the other things will not be okay because your prayer will not prevent you from doing bad action. So, and also as Muslims, before we pray, we have a way of calling prayer. Of course, for Christians, they use bell, and Jews, they use trumpet. But Muslims, do you use, use bell? What do we do? Yes, who knows what do we do before we go to the mosque? There is something. How do we call? Yes. What? Can you tell us? Well, do, well, do we sing, or do we do any other thing? You perform ablution. You perform ablution and do what? But before you perform ablution, somebody have to call you for prayer. And that is called, that is called, yes, Majula. Yes. Wa alaykum salam. It's called? 
Azan. Azan. Somebody have to call you for prayer. We call Azan to gather the people, to inform them that it is time for prayer. Let them get prepared so that, as you say, they will go and perform ablution, do all the necessary things, and come and gather in the mosque on life order faith. So the person who called Azan, what is his name? Who can tell me? Yes, Masrul, can you give us? Yes. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Muazin. Muazin. Azan is the warden that the Muazin utter. That is, of course, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, four times. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, twice. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, twice. Hayy ala salah, twice. Hayy ala al-fala, twice. Then say Allahu Akbar, twice. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad. La ilaha illallah, once. But in the case of Fajr, prayer, we add as-salah to khairu minan naomi. After when we say, before we say Allah Akbar, we say As-Salaatu Qairu Minana, meaning, sleep, uh, meaning prayer is better than sleeping. So this is the way we call for people. We glorify Allah and we show the status of Allah the Almighty instead of singing or dancing, but we call takbir, that is Allah <coughs> is the greatest. Come to success. Of course, prayer is success. Understand? So the other thing also, we need to know in this is that Muslim, where do we offer our prayers? Of course, all religion they have their church that is Christian, and Jews they have synagogue. But Muslim also we have a special place. What is that place? Is it one place or we have different places? Yes, Hassan, can you tell us where as Muslims we offer our prayers? When it is Wa alaikum salam wa we, we offer our prayers at the mosque. We offer our prayer in the mosque. That is good. Is it only in the mosque? And hmm? yes, give him the mic. Mosque and where? And any other place that is clean. Any other place that is clean. Because that's what the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, Allah has made the entire earth for him as a place of worship. The entire earth as a place of was it? But we establish mosque so that we can go and gather there and get the blessing of congregational prayer. That's why we establish mosque. And that mosque is purposely for proclaiming the name of Allah, the Almighty, and the unity of Allah. Not any other business that can be done in the mosque, but only to worship our Allah. And of course, any other place, like our houses, because if it is even narrated that by the Holy Prophet he said that do not offer all your prayers, that is now I feel prayers in the mosque, but offer them in your house so that your house will not be like a graveyard. Why, do he, why did he use the graveyard? Why do he, because graveyard, can you offer prayer there? Obviously not. That's why he said do not leave your house like a graveyard because graveyard, you cannot offer prayer there. So therefore, it is important as Muslim, you offer our congregational prayer in the mosque, we have many Muslims will come and gather and get the blessing of congregational prayer. But in the case of Nawafil, Tahajud, and other involuntary, uh, voluntary prayers, you do them in your house, so that your house will not be, will not be like a grave. Yeah. You understand? And also, as Muslims, where do we face to? You know, other religion, they have their own place to face. But all religion, it doesn't matter. But as Muslim, it matters. Where do we face as Muslims? Yes, Muhammad Taib. Where as Muslim we face when we are praying? All oh, prayers. Salam Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Kaaba. And the Kaaba, the holy Kaaba. You see, Kaaba is the house of Allah. Of course, we have talked about it in our last episode. The reason why Makkah is regarded as a holy place and the reason why Muslims are going to Makkah every year, it is because of the house of Allah is there. As Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran, the first house to be built purposely for people to worship him and to fulfill the purpose of people creation is to what? Worship Allah. That is in Kaaba. So that is where we face and it is called Qibla in Arabic. <coughs> So thank you very much. I hope you have understood it. We have talked about the Holy Kaaba.
as a place where we feast, and we have talked about a place where we worship that is in the mosque and any other places that is clean, and of course in our houses. And also we say that we cannot offer prayer in certain places like the <coughs> graveyard, like in the middle of highway, like in what? A place where they slaughter animals because the, all these places are not clean and where they dump waste material. So we cannot offer prayer in those places. But other than that, any place that is clean, we can offer our prayers there. And prayer is there for us to have a connection and a relationship with Allah since we cannot physically see Allah. That is why Allah put this channel for us to communicate through him. That is through prayer. We ask him and he answers us. He says, Uluni astajib lakum. Call me, I will respond to you. And that can be achieved through prayer. Thank you very much. I hope we have learned something from this. That is the worship, the way Muslim worship. I hope we will benefit from this. Thank you very much for your time and the answers that you gave us and your participation. Until we come on our next episode. Viewers, this is what time allowed us. We have come to the end of another important episode. We are discussing about the worship of Islam, the way Muslim we worship, unlike other faiths. We say we have five daily prayers that we offer. You must offer every day. There is no exceptional. We have said it. You are sick or not sick, you must offer them. And it's for every day. So therefore, we try to stick to the commandment of Allah the Almighty by offering our prayer by all means and on their appointed time, which is very important. Thank you very much and thank you for your uh, stay, staying with us until we come on your way here in MT International Gambia Studio. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.